Hey, what up, guys? Shardness Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the celebrating 85 years of Marvel series deluxe Ghost Rider Danny Ketch version. Yes, we finally have, or I finally have, the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider figure. A lot of other people have gotten this before me, but I'm excited to finally have this in hand, and it looks amazing. This is something that we've all wanted for quite some time. I think going back to Series 3 Toy Biz days is when we got the last Danny Ketch. Nice artwork on the side and on the back of the packaging. There's a little read-up over here. If you want to read that, go ahead and pause it right now. And then you have the Celebrating 85 Years logo on the top. Not much more at the bottom. Bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And if you're trying to get your Marvel Legends, you can do so at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> and here is the Danny Ketch Ghost Rider out of the packaging. And this is awesome. I am really liking this so far. I've taken quite a few photos and I've been having a really good time with it. It's just a really good looking figure and a good looking motorcycle as well uh, i may bring up some gripes uh, we'll, we'll see stay tuned for that but first let's get a closer look at this hell cycle oh man i love this hell cycle just to measure it out getting that out of the way you can see uh, from tire to tire it's like nine and a half inches with the flame effects you're looking at about 12 inches across just to give you that info for your shelf display spacing and then measuring it as far as the height goes you're looking at around five inches right there it looks awesome i really like it a lot comparing it already to the toy biz version uh, you can see how much larger this newer one is compared to the toy biz uh, this does have some nice paint detail but i think the metallic plastic that they used right here is sufficient even though there is a little bit of marbling over there and we don't have this whited out over here in the front on that shield but I mean other than that oh my god I, I think this is great now it doesn't roll it doesn't have the pinholes in it like the toy biz version so I kind of wish we did that it does roll actually when you get it off here it'll roll just fine like that so I misspoke it does roll and then I really like how you could take this piece off right here and you could move it over there if you want his feet facing forward more. So that's pretty dope. And then I'm going to put this back over here because that's where I prefer it. And you get this awesome accessory, which I think is absolutely brilliant. Go ahead and port that into the square piece right over here. Put this tire, well, this is the rear tire. These are uh, sculpted specifically for each tire. And you get that display option, which is freaking amazing. I love that. Looks like it came straight from this image right over here, which I think makes a lot of sense. I mean, dude, very cool idea. And both of these flame effects look great. This is for the front tire right here. I really dig it a lot. Here's the one for the rear. Very nicely sculpted. They are hollow inside, by the way, which is fine with me. Then again, this one looks really good too. So I'm gonna unplug that. The tires look really nice. They have yellow plastic in the inside. And then you have this nice flame sculpt going throughout on the tire as well. You have the shield guard that has all these nicks and everything right over here. Again, I think Century Productions actually pointed this out to me. I think he used orange. In the comics, it looks like it's white most of the time. Uh, what Toy Biz did is they, they used silver, you know? So I, I'm not bothered by it big time. I didn't even notice it until Century pointed it out to me. But yeah, uh, it should have that color there or it should have something there you could adjust this if you want it higher up you could you know take it off completely if you want to and then while we actually have that off see that nice detail sculpted in there with that gunmetal gray color i'm looking right over here this looks really nice i do see some swirling not on this side so much but yeah i saw it right over here and a little bit over there, but for the most part, this looks sick. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Copyright stuff is all at the bottom. Yeah, again, it's more swirling, but there's a wash in there. Like, it, there's black paint in between these seams going throughout, so I really like that. Looks really good. There's the brown seat with some nice leather texturing. Pretty cool. There's a gas cap where you actually it would have been cool to see that little logo where he touches it for the first time and then becomes Ghost Rider. Uh, they changed this, but yeah, it had like a little kind of spawn looking logo. Anyway, you can see your dials right over here. Yeah, that came out looking really clean. I do like that. You get the brakes over here, nice texturing on the handlebars. So yeah, this thing is awesome. Now I already showed off this comparison over here, but uh, <laughs> by the way, this is just so much better, and I've always liked 
this one as well. But I also wanted to bust out this Johnny Blaze Hell Cycle, which is missing a uh, flame accessory on there. But still, uh, I really like this motorcycle as well. They're about the same length. Ah, this comes off a little bit easier. But yeah, just putting these side by side, I wanted to compare those two so you could see them. They both look really good. Uh, I do like them. And then I had to bust out the ramen racer as well. And yeah, these do look very cool side by side. <laughs> Now looking at this Danny Ketch figure, you can see that the head sculpt is the same as what we'd seen with the Johnny Blaze, or at least the last Johnny Blaze figure with the vintage card, and I don't mind that they reuse this. I love the new paint applications around the skull. Uh, the paint right here for the flame is pretty much the same as what we'd seen before, but we've also gotten the pendant stare for the first time on any of these Ghost Rider figures. It's pretty hard to pick up with the camera, you can see that little bit of that swirling mark right there on the inside of the eyes and I think it looks great. Very happy they did that, I'm trying to shine more light on it. You can see that in there. So that's very cool. You get your flaming neck collar right here. You can pop this head off. I did put this Johnny Blaze transitioning head on here just to see how that would look. Of course, the hair color is wrong. Would have been nice if they redid this just with brown hair. I don't really care if it's the same dude, even though I'd prefer it being a brand new sculpt. Uh, you can see that they did paint the spiny neck right over here. You can see some flame coming up from underneath the collar. And just like the other head sculpt, you do get the jaw articulation right here. And I think that's great. And then the rest of it's all new stuff. I don't remember seeing any of this stuff before. You can see we get some nice leathery texturing right here. And then he has his signature chain, which is really awesome. And then you also get another chain right here with the flame effect on there like we'd seen before if you have him holding this while still wearing this you're doing it wrong damn it yeah, it's this is that so if he's holding this you can't have that on there and you just pop the head off and just remove it like that to get it off of there i would have liked to have seen some other accessories based off the chain like i like how he can like stiffen up the chain to make it look like a club that would have been cool to get that as a little added accessory i would have liked that but anyway i love the pinless joints right here with this leathery texture so it's not getting interrupted you get some spikes i would have preferred a little bit more silver paint on these rather than just using the silvery plastic you also get interchangeable hands so you can see he has his motor cycle gripping hands right here again the spikes right here are very cool not too sharp but again wish we had some paint on there uh, but you can see you get a wide open hand for the left side and then you have a fist hand for his right side for some serious gut punching and then you can see the belt right here is pretty sweet we'll get into the articulation more in a little bit but yeah I think the articulation is actually pretty cool on the figure. Pants are all new. Nice texturing and everything on these pants. Again, the benefit of not having pinless joints, the seam is not getting broken up. So I do like that. The boots look fantastic. Really like that. Nice detail with the asymmetry on the spikes and everything. And then you get peg holes right here at the bottom of the feet. And then here's looking at the back of the figure. Still looking pretty good. Can't really complain much about the head articulation aside from it being on a ball joint right there. I prefer to have a neck hinge. And you could get him looking up just that far. He will look down that much you get the jaw articulation and of course the head could turn side to side and pivot a bit you don't have any butterfly joints over here but the arms can move outward above the 90 degree mark they move down that far you could rotate a full 360 while splaying outward a little bit and then you have the bicep swivel you get the double jointed elbows the wrist turn side to side and all the hands have vertical hinges right here you get the u joint right there and it moves back waist cut hips move outward he kicks forward very far back a little bit upper thigh cut double jointed knees he does do the heel to the butt you get boot rotation which i love and then ankles move down they do move up a little bit and he has beautiful ankle pivot uh, and it's worth noting that this belt is shifty i try to keep it on the torso section instead of the waist part it just works better for me this way now to measure out the height of this danny catch ghost rider you can see that he is standing just a, around the seven inch mark just a bit under that going all the way to the top of the flame now for a danny catch comparison you can see our toy biz danny catch next to our hasbro version and they stand at the same height if i was able to get these legs even closer together though this figure would stand taller than the hasbro version and then here's the new danny catch figure next to a couple of johnny blaze figures we have the vintage card ghost rider right here and we have the ghost rider that came with the motorcycle not too long ago yes uh, they're bit taller than this Danny Ketch over here. If you didn't see my interview with the Hasbro team, I did ask Dwight about the height difference. I felt that the Johnny was too tall. Oh. So when we got a chance to do uh, Danny, I wanted to make him more appropriately scaled 
uh, because I always felt that the Johnny was actually too oversized. So take that for what it's worth, but I, I still think this should have been taller. And then here's Danny Ketch next to the Walmart exclusive Joe Fixit. We have the Sabretooth 2-pack Wolverine, and then we have the Spinneret 2-pack Renew Your Vows Spider-Man. And seeing Danny Ketch and the Renew Your Vows Spider-Man body mold side by side, I gotta say he doesn't look tremendously short anymore. I guess Dwight may have had a point, even though I think Danny Ketch is supposed to stand a little bit taller than Peter Parker. I don't know all the heights of the characters, so if you do, let me know in the comment section below. But regardless of that, them standing at about the same height of each other is what I imagine in my head, so I'm not really too bothered by it. I'm more likely to have these two characters standing side by side on the shelf rather than a Johnny Blaze and a Danny Ketch standing side by side or standing at all. I'm going to have him sitting on the damn motorcycle, so I'm not really that bummed out about the height. And then here's Danny Ketch next to a hand ninja or a Death Watch goon, whatever you want it to be, but yeah, you can still see that he is a bit on the short side. These shoulders are at about the same spot. I mean, he's not drastically shorter than Johnny Blaze, but yeah, he, he could definitely be a little bit taller. And then here's Danny Ketch next to your average six-inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man, and I have no time for stop motion this morning. I have a gig I gotta run off to. By the way, follow my drumming page on Instagram. It's Russ underscore Aiken underscore drums, and yeah, so check that out. But when I see these two side by side, I mean, the shoulders on Danny Ketch are taller than Spider-Man. I actually think Dwight really meant what he said. I actually don't think that's a BS cover-up now that I see these two side by side. This is an appropriate height for him. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really that... It doesn't look too bad to me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And I really like this figure a lot. I was expecting myself to be a lot more bummed out over the height issue of this figure than anything else, but I'm not. And I gotta just be honest with you guys. I play with my figures before I review them. So I take into account of these gripes and how much it actually disrupts the fun factor. And the height thing doesn't. It doesn't bother me when I'm getting him posed around fighting uh, some hand ninjas or uh, teamed up with the new Fantastic Four. Like the scale thing, while I still wish he was taller, don't get me wrong, I wish he was taller but it's not ruining the figure for me. I feel like the Ms. Marvel being as short as she is, that bothers me more so, and I think there's more of a height difference with that figure than it is with this figure over here. So, uh, well, not comparing to the Johnny Blazes, but, you know, comparing him next to Renew Your Vows Spider-Man, that height difference is not as drastic than the Black Widow compared to Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel came out way shorter, so, yeah. I'm really happy, man. I love the Hell Cycle. It totally delivered. I, I guess I could make that alteration, you know, with those open spots on that shield of the Hell Cycle. But other than that, man, uh, shit. At the price point, around 60 bucks. I feel like that's around the price that I paid for this guy in the Hell Cycle. I'm going to give it a sun rating of... <laughs> yes! Oh, God! Please. And I'd like to know what you guys think, so you gotta let me know in the comments section below. If you want to see the latest in Marvel news and a photo gallery of images from this review, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, whatnot, and on Mercari. And I will catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.